All right. Today we have uh, Shangdi, who's going to talk about provenance tracking and inductor. Um, one of the problems that uh, we have is that um, the torch compile workflow and export workflows, they, they create a bunch of graphs in some sequence, and it's not very clear for users where some nodes came from and so on. So this is a very cool debugging tool that Shangdi has been working on. Take it away, Shangdi. All right, cool. Yeah, so uh, as Avik said, uh, from time to time, you know, we get questions about uh, where does the kernel come from and uh, what kind of fusion happened. Uh, so here uh, we're trying to create this provenance tracking tool that uh, sort of helps users to answer that question. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is going to be all in this, mostly in this tutorial as well. Uh, so feel free to check this out. So before you know, I go into the details of how to use this tool, uh, just some background knowledge. Um, so in inductor, you know, both AOT and G inductor, the general workflow is you have a model code, and you do some graph tracing to get an input graph. So this graph is what uh, we call pre grad graph in this tutorial, and it's also like the input graph to the inductor. And then we do some sort of FX graph transformations on this input graph to get a post-grad graph. Um, and then we do some lowering and cogen. And this part is not like FX graph manipulation anymore. We're gonna lower to the inductor IR uh, and cogen, you know, either Triton code or you know CPP kernel code. Uh, to be more specific, here's a more detailed version of the same graph. You know, your graph tracing could be either Torch Dynamo or MakeFs Graph or just a loaded exported program. Uh, and in the FX graph transformation, there are, you know, um, different sets of graph passes. And more importantly, an autograd slash functionalization pass. That's why the second graph is called postgrad graph. Um, and then there's the, the, the lowering and, and scheduling and cogent part. Uh, so the tool is going to show you three panels, the pre -grad graph, the postgrad graph, and the generated code, uh, and 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 you know how the uh, problem is tracking happens, you know among the three of them. Yeah, okay. and so between the pre grad graph and the post grad graph, uh, some ops can also get decomposed to multiple ops and so on, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So now let's see a quick demo here. Um. Okay, we should edit that part out. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's see a quick demo here. Uh, so here we have, you know, very simple uh, model and uh, we're, you know, doing an export and an AOT compile. Uh, so yeah, and uh, some pre um, commands that you need to do before this demo is move around this. Uh, I still have a banner, okay, okay. So the first thing you need to do is you need to install this tool called TL parse. It's it's a Rust library. Um, I already installed it here, but if you if you don't have it, you can install it. Uh, besides problem tracking to the TL parse tool is also a really good debugging tool. Um, which I guess maybe we can make another video uh, for a more in-depth uh, in-depth uh, tutorial on that. But here we're just gonna use it for um the inductor problem tracking, and also you also need to install a, a version of Torch, which you know I already installed. All right, so now um, to use, uh, to get the problem tracking wheel, uh, you need to set some environment variables. Uh, the first one just says, you know, where my logs is gonna go. Um, and this two are just, oops, uh, these torch logs means I want my inductor logs in my log. And this just says uh, I want uh, the debugging level of the logs. All right, so let's just run this. Um, which is this demo.py. And you can see that there are some logs. And specifically, you can see a log is, you know, produced in uh, this log directory. Mm -hmm. And then let's just do TL parse. Um, copy the pass here, the pass. And uh, you need this uh, flag called inductor provenance. Provenance, provenance, can type, okay. Great, so now you get this wheel. So uh, this is what TL parse gives you and there's like a lot there. Uh, and uh, more importantly, if for like our tutorial purposes, you get um, a pre-grad graph 
that's you know the pre graph I've been talking about. Uh, like if you click into it, you can see this, right? And uh, you get a postgrad graph, uh, inductor postgrad graph. You get uh, a generated code, uh, this uh, both the wrapper code and the kernel code, and also you get uh, a mapping, you know, between the different nodes in the JSON file that kind of looks like this. But you know, this is a little bit hard to read. So the nice thing is uh, we have this uh, provenance tracking viewer that kind of shows you the pre -grad graph, the post -grad graph, and the generated code here. And you can see that, oh, you know, all of those nodes are uh, decomposed from the GLU in the pre -grad graph. And also you can see that uh, uh, they kind of get merged into the CPP fields JLU model Redo signal node, which you know, if you hover over this, you can also see that oh, this is a, um, you know, fused from uh, all of those you know, four nodes in the graph here. Um, the other thing is there's also like a comment uh in the pre graph, graph and post graph that shows uh where uh, the modal code uh that the line below is coming from. Like for example, like here you can see that this. Uh, Jello comes from you know the line seventeen in our demo dot py, which is the tortured mm -hmm. dot and dot functional dot Jello code. Uh, yeah, hopefully this is self-explanatory. Uh, now let's see, you know, another example from the JIT compile. Um, so now uh, one uh note here is if you are uh, running torch dot compile. Um, there's you know some chance that uh, the compilation um, will be skipped because the FX graph is cached. So if you don't see the post graph graph or anything in your log, just try adding this FX, FX graph cache equal to zero so they got compiled again and the log gets generated. Um, so let's do this and we should see right another log gets generated. Uh, this one. And let's do the same thing. PL parse the log. Okay, so uh, if you already have a output directory, you might have to do this like overwrite thing to overwrite or like provide another directory. Okay, same thing here. Uh, everything you needed is also here. The only difference is now you know your output code is not the CVP code anymore. Uh, it's the Triton code. Mm. But uh, the two is gonna look the same, where uh, like you still have, uh, basically the same thing that we just shown before. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we have you know some improvements we're trying to do for it. Uh, so if you have any you know suggestions, let us know, and uh, you know we'll consider adding them as new features. Oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, and in, in, in export, we often hear that um, in particular because um, we we run decompositions after export, um, and those decompositions are written in in some table that is inside by torch. Of course, you can opt, uh, you can you can customize it, but often people do not know how uh, ops are decomposed. So uh, this is already the first two panels are pretty useful. Um, so in general, I had a question about like runtime. So it looks like it's, this is integrated with AOT inductor and, and normal inductor. So in the future, would it be possible to integrate this with other runtimes? Uh, is there some kind of interface that runtimes can implement that can sort of give this level of information? Uh, yeah, so I think for the first two panels, you sort of get them for free yeah. uh, because they're just FX graph transformations. And then if you want your own graph transformation to be captured as well, basically what we did here to capture these is um, we use this uh, thing called graph transform observer. And if you just uh, uh, add this you know, context manager to whatever graph transformation that you do, uh, you should be able to Get your provenance tracked as well, and the tracking information is gonna be stored uh in the node meta field called from node. I don't know if you can yeah, just like here. Um, in terms of the second panel, 
uh, in the current setup, unfortunately, you'd have to do some manual tracking uh, to produce your node mapping between the postgrad graph and the kernel in like the JSON format, uh, like like the one that we have here, right? Like we have the uh, CPU code to post like JSON format. So the, the, the front end basically just, you know, raising this JSON file. So if your back end has somehow like also produced a JSON file like this, um, the front end can render that as well. Uh, you know, if there's like a, I don't know, a lot of interest in also extending this to other backends, then we could try to uh, modulize this to make it easier for, you know, other backend authors to add their provenance tracking, uh, maybe something like a hooks. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, anything else you want to share? Yeah, I think I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's end the video. Uh, yeah, please, please use this tool. Uh, a lot of people internally at, at Meta, uh, they're pretty excited about this. So thanks, Shangdi. All right, thank you. All right. Bye.